thought that uh, came right back off of our game that we played on Saturday where I thought that was the best we played. And uh, I thought the first, you know, 25 minutes or so of the game, our shots didn't necessarily fall, but I thought it was the best we had played. We had nine guys that we played in the first half, all nine of them had scored. I thought we had executed our defensive game plan really, really well, obviously to build the 13-point lead with 11 to go. I thought we had done some really, really good things. Um, you know, late, I thought we got a little bit stagnant offensively. Um, you know, but at the end of the day, I look at the stat sheet, and it's exactly what I expected or hoped for, except for one thing, and that's the young man who had shot 11 total threes on the season coming into the game going six for seven. You know, so give him credit, you know, and uh, give them credit. You know, I know that uh, certainly they have a pattern of recruiting perimeter players that can shoot, and uh, you knew that he, he could, just hadn't yet, uh, and he got on quite a roll. And I thought he was really the difference uh, in the game when you look at the uh, when you look when you look at the stat sheet. You know, other guys kind of did what I thought they they might do. Um, you know, we did we did about what I thought we would do. We had about two or three sloppy turnovers. I thought because uh, we like to play with about ten. When they only have five, you know, you'd say, well, twelve's not very many, coach. I mean, you're nitpicking, but you know, two or three like that in a Big Ten basketball game where every possession matters. Uh, can certainly be a big uh, difference, uh, but I thought our guys were aggressive. I thought they practiced well. They played well Saturday. They played well today for the majority of the game, and you know they probably feel like if they were honest that they, you know, one got snatched away from them. But that happens in Big Ten play. You know, you, we got 17 more of them like this coming up, and I told them you got to jump up and get prepared the next two or three days here and be ready to go uh, on, on Saturday. So again, give them credit. Uh, for making plays and hanging in there, and, and then uh, I thought that uh, I thought they passed the ball really well late. You know, I, I, I thought Levert had some nice finds uh, uh, to Doyle there, and obviously with Dawkins making shots like he was, he was the guy on that side a lot, which was smart on their part, and that puts you in a blender a little bit of how much you're going to help off of him. So again, I thought at the end of the day, the difference in the game was Dawkins. Questions. Was he out still coming in? Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah, he was. And, uh, you know, we had talked to him about, you know, a lot of their freshmen because we'd seen those guys, certainly in our business, you see those guys prior to them arriving in college. And uh, we knew he could make shots. We talked about that. We just said he hadn't done it quite yet, maybe at the level. But that happens with a lot of freshmen, I think, even freshmen I've coached over the years. So we certainly knew he was capable. You know, he was on the scouting report. He had shot 11 threes and seven twos, so he had shot more threes and twos. We were aware of that. Uh, now, did we anticipate him going six for seven? I don't think anybody in America would have probably anticipated that, but give the kid credit. He stepped up and he made them, and he made them at crucial times. He made big ones, so I give the kid a lot of credit. The losses this season down the stretch, you guys have struggled a little bit. Uh, have you seen some similarities? To the earlier games you know, I have to watch this one on film, but I really thought it was, I mean, they made shots. Um, our defense, I thought, was really good for about 25 minutes. And then, uh, you know, then they started making some shots. And I'm sure there's some plays that we, we feel like we could be better defensively, uh, Marcus. I also think at the offensive end, you know, we got a little stagnant a little bit. You know, and we, the first half, I thought the ball moved with more uh, fluidity. I thought it moved and flowed better. We had nine different guys score. You know, I, I thought that our guys were really unselfish. I thought Ray was really unselfish. You know, I thought other than making shots, I thought Ray had a heck of a game. You know, he, I don't know how many, what, 11 boards, six assists. He was terrific defensively. He was really, really good. And that's what makes Ray special. Ray is a high-level guy on defense, high-level guy rebounding, high-level guy on offense. Just tonight, three for 11. He had a couple wide-open threes, and he just didn't knock them down. Sometimes that's the difference between winning and losing. Was that play at the end of regulation, was that for him? Or was that it was for him to read it, uh, just like the game uh, against Missouri. Uh, you know, I, I thought when he came off, they committed two guys to him. If, you know, if we had to do it over again, which you don't have that opportunity over again, I think he would tell you probably should have thrown it back to Malcolm on that play. Malcolm was wide open at the top of the key, and he maybe didn't read it like he should have. But I'm going to trust Ray's uh, judgment. You know, I'm, I'm going down with Ray. You also trusted Jalen to run the show at the end of the game. Yeah, and I thought he played well. I thought, thought he played well over the weekend. I think he's practiced well. Uh, I like his disposition at that position. Obviously, we're going to need both of them, Rob. Uh, to play well. I just thought that Tate was in a little bit more of a rhythm 
and uh, made the decision to go with him. Don, in addition to Dawkins <coughs> down the stretch, they were going pick and roll with Albrecht or uh, Levert, and they were going to Doyle as much as they could. Talk about the way that Doyle played at the end. Well, Doyle had some finishes, but you got to remember, pick and roll's tied together. So you put guys out there in position of who you got to help off of on certain pick and rolls. And when you got four guys making threes, you know, that, that puts you in those situations where Doyle gets those opportunities and certainly uh, took advantage of them and, and laid the ball in and finished strong. You mentioned losing some of that fluidity on offense. It, in the second half, it seemed like they had a lot more success with the 1-3-1 one, one than the man-to-man. <coughs> -man. Well, why was it successful? I think both play? zones probably a little bit. But, I, again, I haven't charted it, so I, I, I don't know. You know, uh, we've obviously seen the 1-3-1 one, one for years, you know, four years for me. You know, last year we were really, really good against it. So, you know, that's that's on us and our guys. We got to, we, we had, you know, we got we got to execute a little bit better. But I thought we were actually off the look at it. I thought we were a little better against that. The one I was disappointed in was the 2-3 zone. You know, we've got a we played against zones throughout all a non-conference schedule. And we played against one in particular that is maybe one of the best in the country. And uh, you know, we've got to execute better than we did there. The ball needed to flow a little bit more. We need to have a little bit more rhythm than what we had in the second half. How critical is it how the team handles this given just the, the amount of road games coming up? Well, I mean, we're older, so we'll handle it fine. I mean, we, these guys have been through some wars now, you know, especially some of the older guys. So, yeah, they're disappointed. They should be disappointed. Uh, they played really, really well for a large portion of the game. So, and just didn't, you know, just didn't finish it slash they, they took it. I mean, you make, I don't know how, how many shots they make in a row in the second half at one point, DB? Seven? Six. Six or seven in a, in a row on seven consecutive possessions. I mean, that doesn't happen a lot. So give them credit. They did that. You know, I mean, they got a, they made the plays and, and, uh, and finished the game uh, certainly in a better fashion than we did making those plays. So, but at the end of the day, I mean, it's, it's, we already made a pack before this deal started. We know there's 18 of them. All 18 of them are separate. You could play this exact game tomorrow and it could be completely different. One way or the other. I'm not saying in our favor. It's just that every night's different. You know, you gotta play the game that's in front of you, the forty minute game that's in front of you, and our guys know that. Time for one or two more if we have them. When when is struggling with that, obviously Malcolm won well, but but who are the guys you want to see? We're a team, you know. We don't. We don't. And obviously, Ray and Malcolm can. We can run offense through those guys as indicative of how well Malcolm played. And uh, and obviously, Ray was six assists and could have had more if we shot the ball better. I thought he was terrific. You know, I thought he really played well. Um, I thought other guys. When you have nine guys score at halftime, you know, and all nine guys who played scored the ball. I thought we were really unselfish. Really moved the ball uh, well offensively. So. You know, we're not the team that's going to take one guy, Shannon, and, and our guys know this, and say, hey, isolate this guy and get him 30 every night. You know, that, that's not us. We are a team. Now, obviously, Ray and Malcolm are very talented offensively, uh, but we're going to take what the defense gives us. We're going to play to our strengths. I thought we did that for the most part. You know, I, I thought we did some good things. I'm not going to say that we didn't just because we lost. You know, I, I thought we played well for the majority of the game. Thanks,